Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here. I hope you're having a great day and I hope this video can make it a little bit better. Today they just released the patch notes. Now they weren't able to get it up on their normal site, but they were able to post it onto the Reddit. So we'll be going through and reading just all the patch notes on the Reddit. Now the patch will come out tomorrow and we will have a discussion on our stream tomorrow morning, further breaking down all of these and theory crafting or going through how we think everyone is going to shape up. But right now, let's just go through the patch notes. So this is quality of life improvements for Path of Champions. So they adjusted eight Path of Champions deck upgrades and six Path of Champions star powers. Now this is massive. There's been a lot of champions that have been really underperforming or just haven't been doing well. And so the fact that they are improving those or at least trying to is really nice. Now there's also been some other changes. So players now revive with 100% health instead of 50%. That'll be a really nice upgrade right there. Early lost powers. So they'll now only trigger when you lose an adventure without winning one encounter and it was previously two encounters. So if you didn't know before, if you would lose early, then we'd try the adventure again. You'd just be given the exact same three set of powers, which was like game start, draw two, plus one starting mana for the first three matches or increase max nexus health. So it's nice that they're making it so you, this will only trigger when you lose the first encounter. And now the early lost powers will be a selection of random common powers and allow for re-rolling instead of just being this same three set of powers. That is quite nice, especially with how difficult some of the new adventures are, specifically Lissandra. The Wild Fragment cap has been increased from 50 to 200. This is absolutely massive, especially for people like me, where for the past couple months, I'm just stuck at that hard cap. So all of my daily wins, all of those Wild Fragments are just completely wasted. Really feels bad. So increasing the cap to 200 is amazing. The Victory Daily Quest rewards have been increased from four Wild Fragments to five. Another big win that is awesome. More Wild Fragments for everyone one and that will really add up over time and the monthly challenges now reward the cosmic blessings instead of the cosmic pearls so the cosmic pearls give you plus one starting mana and then give you a bunch of xp when you finished a adventure so now instead of the plus one starting mana it gives you just one one and still gives you that XP. People were kind of abusing the plus one starting mana, and so they're just switching that, and they're going to be converting your existing Cosmic Pearls into those Cosmic Blessings. This is a bit disappointing, but I understand people were abusing it, and they don't really want to have to deal with that anymore. So now let's look at how they adjusted some of these champions. So up first is Bard. His power used to be plus one starting mana, and then when you draw a card with chimes on it, plant a chime in your deck. Now it's when you draw a card with chime on it, plant two chimes in your deck, so just doubling the passive amount of times you get from the star power quite nice and then they also adjusted his some of his level up upgrades so before you had babbling bandoliers with studded leather that is replaced with banana blaster and ancient coin so you can see that card right here this is the card they're adding to bard's deck and removing the babbling bandoliers which is quite nice this is obviously much more themed for bard play deal damage equal to my power to a unit so if this has like a whole bunch of chimes on it this could be really solid removal and it's getting that ancient coin so it's going to go down to a three cost they're also changing his cosmic binding so instead of having a poro snacks it's now getting a charging sigil one that cosmic binding is deal two to a unit and stun a different unit so that's going to deal three but it's no longer going to summon that poro next up we have evelyn at champion level 18 now warden's prey shadow totem is replaced with hardy rations for nora for vora this is pretty good the warden's prey shadow totem was pretty bad for evelyn because with evelyn you want to keep your units from dying so summoning a ephemeral unit that's gonna die at the end of the round is exactly the opposite of what you want for your deck so getting rid of that shadow totem and giving regen to one of your cards is really nice for nar they're changing it so it used to be create a wallop in hand and then if you already have one reduce his cost by one that wallop is nar's champion spell and it's deal one to an enemy and stun it so now instead it's going to be create a two cost wallop in hand and then if you already have one reduce its cost by one this is really nice just making sure you're getting this good spell that you can use either for a little bit of removal or some control and just making it always cost a bit less this will be a pretty decent upgrade they're also changing the heroic refrain from grifter's deck and that's being replaced with pyromantic wake on primal strength so that pyromantic wake deal three to the enemy nexus that will be quite solid as you're always trying to trigger nexus damage every single round so just giving you another way to trigger that damage will be pretty helpful. Next up, we have Kai'Sa, champion level four deck upgrade buff. Second skin gets stopwatch. So that stopwatch, I believe it's the same thing that is on Nami's champion spell where it increases the speed to burst. So her second skin going back to burst speed will be quite nice. Kane is up next and they're changing his second star power. So it used to be plus one starting mana, 
each game the first time an ally kills an enemy and survives create a random dark and equipment in hand it costs two less now it's just game start create a random dark and equipment in hand it costs two less so they're getting rid of that whole first part which is very good it was kind of wasted and annoying especially because we had a whole bunch of other decks that also were equipment based where they were just making it at the start of the game so giving Kane this handicap was very unneeded so it's nice they're getting rid of it you're just getting a darken equipment right away at the start of the game so that will be a nice little buff champion level three the darken lodestones zeal so quick attack is replaced with bilge water cutlass so challenger that'll be pretty nice for kane you want to be sure you're getting the right kills and so being able to challenge a target to get that kill and make sure your unit survives is very good champion level six upgrade wounded white flame skirmishing saber is replaced with a mana potion for furious wielder that's not too bad furious wielder this is your essentially removal spell where one of your equipment unit strikes an enemy but it costs four mana so getting this down to three mana is quite nice it is a little sad that the wounded white flame doesn't get that skirmisher saber anymore so again, again challenger but should still be a upgrade overall and then wounded right white flame right here is being replaced anyway so it doesn't really matter and they're being replaced with shadow blade fanatic so you can see that right here three cost three three quick attack when you've equipped an ally this game create a shadow fiend in hand so that shadow fiend right there this will be much better for Kane. Actually fits his overall aesthetic other than the Wounded White Flame, which very much seemed out of place. So that is quite nice right there. Lee Sin also gained a improvement. Gruesome Theater is replaced with Unworthy Soul. So Gruesome Theater was one where you could recall a unit if it had three or less health, I believe. And that instead is going to be the Unworthy Soul. So you see that right here, five cost fast. Flow, I cost two less. So if you've played two spells last round, you'll get that cost reduction. Recall a unit or landmark. If it has any attachments, destroy them first. So it will still be fairly expensive, even with that cost reduction from the flow, but it is nice you can recall a unit or a landmark and there's no requirements on it. So just whatever you want to recall, it's fine. And you can even use it to destroy any attachments. So I really like the versatility of the spell. This will be decent for Lee Sin. They're also replacing Concussive Palms Grifter's deck with Hextech Fabricator rank two. So the Grifter's deck would shuffle several copies of that card into your deck and make them cost one. It's a pretty good upgrade, but it changed with the Hextech Fabricator. So now it's just gonna give your strongest unit a random rare item. I guess this will help you at least more immediately. Whereas the other one would be a little bit more of a long game. Nasus is up next. They're adjusting his second star power. So before round start, grant the strongest enemy negative one. And now it's just enemies have negative one. And that's negative one power. This is essentially just a common power. And it is a pretty solid common power. But it's still a little underwhelming. I think it's definitely better than his old star power. I think they could have even made this round start grant enemies negative one power. Instead of just the strongest enemy. And that still would have been okay. But nice that they're making it at least a bit better we also have champion level two deck upgrade so bloodthirsty marauder their studded leather is replaced with a giant spelt so instead of getting one one they're getting zero two so they gain a little bit more health not too bad because it was a fairly squishy card neela getting a bit of an upgrade or adjustment so before create a copy of the first two cards you discard each round then draw one fleeting at next round start for each. That's being changed to when you discard a card, create a copy of it in your deck and draw one fleeting at next round start. So this is pretty nice. Before for Neela, you could actually end up discarding a lot of your hand just because you would overdraw and have all these fleeting cards and then it'd be wasted. Really nice that right here, just every time you discard a card, so your fleeting cards, if you don't play them, they'll get shuffled back into your deck before you could very easily mill yourself and just run out of cards. So it's nice that, that won't happen anymore. Could be a little bit worse because for this power up here, you'd end up drawing two fleeting cards at the start of the round. Whereas for the new power, it seems like you might just be drawing one fleeting. So that could slightly actually be a, a nerf built in here. Overall, I think it's still a buff, but you might draw less fleeting cards at round start. So probably throw on the Gravedigger Spade just to make sure you're still drawing two fleeting cards. They're also changing the Buru Lookout so it gets an Ancient Coin instead of the Entrancing Lure. This is a really good upgrade. The Lookout was your five cost. And so it going down to a four cost will definitely help you out and make it a bit more playable. Orin finally getting some love. So before his first star power was game start summon on the Orin's Forge. So that is a landmark that would take up board space on your board. And that would make a fleeting time and dedication every round. But you'd still have to spend a man on it. So instead of that, they're just saying round start, create a zero cost 
fleeting time and dedication in hand. That is very, very nice. And then for the third star power, you're still doing that, but now the first time you forge each round, forge again. So really they're just getting rid of the whole Orn's Forge landmark aspect, and they're just giving you the free fleeting time and dedication every single round, and still giving you the same aspect of when you forge each round, forge again. This will be amazing for Orn. Before you always had just this mana tax of having to spend one mana every single round on these time and dedications. So the fact that that's not gonna be happening anymore will make Orn feel so much better. That was it for the champion changes. There's a couple other notes to be aware of. The big one is that 5.4 will not have an event pass with the new expansion. That's normally what happens, but Apparently they're not able to do that for this next patch. They say they're still working on trying to do event passes in the future, but for the next patch, we'll just have a unique quest chain that players can complete for cosmetic rewards to celebrate the expansion. So they're still trying to give us something, but it won't be a event pass. As far as some bug fixes, they fixed the bug with NAR's second star power. So that is quite nice. Fixed a couple bugs and they added some items to the adventure pools so there's some items that they technically added in some previous patches but they never actually put it into the game so they like revealed it showed it off but they didn't actually enable it so it never actually showed up so for the items they're adding, it's Power Riff, Arcane Knowledge, Anti-Up, and Excavator's Charge. Power Riff is right here, so this is for a spell. Costs one less for each card you've drawn this round. Arcane Knowledge, so this goes on a unit and it's draw a spell. So pretty nice. We already have the other version of this in the spell where it's Hero's Call, so this is on a spell and it draws a unit. We got the Anti-Up, so negative two cost and fleeting. That'll be pretty nice, and that's on a unit. And then Excavator's Charge, so when you play a card, give me one one this round. So those are the different items that, as you see, they were added in a previous patch notes or revealed, I should say, in a previous patch notes, but never actually added to the game. So apparently now they're actually adding those ones to the game, which will be quite nice. And also apparently they finally fixed the Titanify issue where it'll now appear on five to seven cost units instead of just eight or higher because before it was pretty much always useless but now it might actually be useful overall these seem like some really great changes this will help a lot of the lower performing champions be a lot better but i think some of the champions could still use a bit of help specifically nasus but these are all solid changes especially some of these like the wild fragment increase and increasing the daily rewards those are really nice so overall i think they did a great job with quality improvement for Path of Champions, this should make the game much better to play. If you want to have a further discussion about all these patch notes, we will be discussing them on stream tomorrow at 9am, but I hope this video helped you out and I hope you have a great day.